The Anderson Hasselbach equation is shown here. It is applicable for situations that involve buffers. So buffers are defined as any type of system solution that contains appreciable concentrations of your conjugate base and appreciable concentrations of your conjugate acid. So these buffers are actually meant to resist large, swift changes in pH. Remember, pH is a measurement of hydrogen ion concentration, or uh, hydrogen ion and hydromonium ion, H3O plus, are pretty much the same thing. So this equation is used, as stated before, uh, in buffers. So how do you know if you have a buffer? Well, look for anything that is a weak acid, or look for anything that is a weak base because it will not go to 100% to the product side. So you're going to have a back and forth the reaction is going to go somewhat to the products and will remain somewhat in the reactive side as well. So weak acids and the conjugate bases, weak bases and their conjugate acids form uh, the best complements of buffers. The definition of buffers is that they can just change in pH. So if you add uh, some acid, the acid is going to be taken up by A minus that's present in your buffer. If you add A minus, it's going to be taken up or it will be protonated by HA that's present in your buffer solution. So any amount of acid HA or any amount of A minus conjugate base are going to get eaten up respectively by either the A minus or the HA that's present in your buffer solution. The best buffering capacity is where pH is equal to pKa plus minus 1. So remember, this pKa is the acid dissociation constant for one proton. So one proton is going to have a Ka. From there, we calculate the pKa. And this equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, is apt for determining situate excuse me, for determining the pH. So practice problem number one asks us to find the pH when the A minus concentration is ten times the concentration of the acid. In part B, where the HA concentration is 10 times the concentration of A minus. So notice here, one is tenfold greater than the other. And find the pH where HA is equal to A minus. So here you just basically plug HA and A minus. They're equal to one another, so they cancel each other out. You'll get log of one. The first practice problem asks us three situations where you have different concentrations of A minus over HA. So in the first situation, you have A minus, the concentration of the conjugate base is equal to 10 times the concentration of the acid. And by plugging that in, so this is just simply a plug and chug situation. So I'll have pH, so I'll just substitute instead of A minus, I'll substitute 10 times H minus, uh, A, uh, excuse me, instead of A minus, I'm going to substitute 10 times HA, and HA is just going to still be HA. All right, so I have a situation here where pH is equal to pKa plus the HAs and HAs cancel, plus log of 10. You have 10 times the amount of A minus over HA, your pH only changes by one unit. In an opposite situation where the acid its concentration is 10 times the concentration of a conjugate base. Where HA is actually 10 times A minus, so I'm just going to plug in HA. A minus here and the A minus cancel, and you're left with pH is equal to log of 0.1, which is minus 1 on your calculator. Situation where you have 10 times the amount of base versus acid, your pH unit only goes down by 1. Situation where HA equals A minus, well, let's look at our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation again. And now I'll just plug in, when they both equal one another, they essentially cancel each other out. I'll plug in A minus here, because HA is equal to A minus. See, when the conjugate base is equal to the conjugate acid, the pH is equal to the pKa on that proton. You have 10 times the amount of, con <clears throat> of conjugate base to that of conjugate acid, your pH only goes up by one unit, even though you have 10 times the amount. Okay, that's a lot. And finally, in this situation, if you have 10 times the amount of acid, okay, so you have 10 times the amount of acid, acid is 10 times the amount of conjugate base, so you have 10 times the amount of acid, your pH only goes down by one unit. In problem number two, we are given a drug, acetylsalicyclic acid. Notice you're not given the structure of this, but that's okay, because the only important 
and essential information is that we're given the pKa of that proton. So the pKa or the Ka is for one proton. It's for one H+. Plus. So acetylsalicyclic acid has a pKa of 3.5. We really need to know the structure of acetylsalicyclic acid. So, okay, so notice I really had no idea what acetylsalicyclic acid looks like. I just know that this is the Ka for that drug acetylsalicyclic acid. That's the pKa of this proton is 3.5. When this drug hits the stomach, it's going to encounter a pH environment that equals to 1. Remember, the gut is uh, really rather acidic. What form is going to exist in the stomach? Well, this is pretty simple because the stomach, when acetylsalicyclic acid or, you know, common name, aspirin or whatever painkiller it's known as, when it hits the stomach, that's what the pH environment it will encounter. The pKa of this proton is given to us at 3.5. And so now we have the log of the conjugate base. This is your conjugate base. This is the corresponding conjugate acid to that conjugate base. So the conjugate base here is so 1 minus 3.5 is going to be minus 2.5. Go to a log of the base acid. They're both conjugates of each other. And, well, how do we solve for this ratio? Okay, you're going to take the inverse log. Doing that on my calculator, I get an answer of. Calculator, I'll just do the inverse or shift log. It's 10 to the minus 2.5. So, minus 2.5. And we're getting 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3. So that species dominates at pH 1 dominated form. So if we flip this ratio, we have to flip this, so I can do 1 over 0 0.00316 equals to salicyclic acid divided by acetosalicyclate. The acid, the HASC, the acetosalicyclic acid form, is about, let me flip that, about 316 times more. So in a pH 1 of the stomach, I'm going to have 316 more of the protonated form of salicyclic acid for every one form of the conjugate base, acetosalicyclate. Final practice problem, you're asked to straight up use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for acetic acid. You have 0.2 molar with sodium acetate. We know that we want to make a buffer that's pH 6. We're given the pKa of acetic acid is 4.66. It has a pKa of 4.66 according to the problem. Way we can get a Ka for that. And let's go back to our Henderson-Hasselbalch here. pH is equal to buffer to be at pH 6.0. The pKa that was given to us is 4.66. That in here, 6.0 equals 4.66 plus that we can get a pH of 6 in this conjugate acid, conjugate base buffer. So 6 minus 4.66 is the first thing we'll do to pop the log out. I'm going to do the inverse log. So that's going to be 10 to the power of 1.34 is going to equal to 10 to the power of log of this, pops this out. So I have 0 0.25, 0 0.25, this was given to us in the problem. And 10 to the power of 1.34 in my calculator setting is, I'll solve for the acetic acid concentration. Going for the acetic acid concentration, I get a value of a 1, 1. So in 0.25 molar of acetate ion, sodium acetate, sodium is a counter ion. If I add 0.0, 1, 1 molar of acetic acid will have a buffer whose pH is going to be 6. Combination produces a buffer whose pH is 6 based on a pKa value given to us at 4.66.